At the beginning of the movie we see a beautiful lady named Maria. Skipping through the long queue inside the building, Maria goes inside a room where other women are also present. At present the war is going on between the Soviet Union and the Nazis. Maria asks the old woman about the future of Moscow, but the woman starts telling her own future, not Moscow's. She says that Maria is in one-sided love with someone. Hearing his useless talk, Maria starts leaving from there. Then the old woman says again that before leaving Moscow, she will meet the man she loves, and she will also become the mother of his child. She asks Maria to show her her hand. She tells that Maria has committed many crimes. Saying this the woman kisses his hand, but Maria quickly frees her hand and leaves the room, and goes outside the building to clean her hands of snow. Actually, the commissioner himself had sent Maria to inspect that woman. Maria tells that that woman is a number one fraudster, who spreads superstition in the name of religion by hiding behind the curtain. The commissioner tells that she has no eyes and so that no one gets scared. She remains veiled. Maria says that woman is crazy, who just asks the mothers of the soldiers who went to war to pray. The commissioner commends her for completing the task, and Maria walks away. Outside, Maria meets her friend Powell, who is going to war. He asks Maria to convey his message to his wife, that she should not wait for him, that she should go to her auntie's house as soon as possible. Maria reaches Powell's house remembering his address, and narrates Powell's message to his wife. Powell's wife's condition was very bad, she could not take care of the child alone, but her crying has no effect on Maria. She gives him a message and leaves from there. The battle continues outside, and Maria sits quietly in the corner of the room. Just then he hears some voices. Upon checking, he finds two thieves, who try to scare Maria. But Maria kills both of them very brutally. Maria's companion expresses grief over her death, and prays to God that she may go to heaven. But Maria is an atheist. She has no faith in God. We then find the commander-in-chief discussing with his assistant about an old woman who shows people their future. His assistant says that what he says often proves to be true. Hearing this, the commander comes to meet him. The woman says that people have faith in the church, so the commander should not come between their faith, and they do not need to be afraid. Commander asks that he is scared. How does he know this? The woman tells that she knows everything. She asks the commander to promote the statue of Mother Mary throughout Moscow. This is the only way Moscow will be able to avoid being destroyed in the war. Then the commissioner decides to send Maria on a mission. He shows him the church on the map and asks him to bring the idol from there. The commissioner calls it a sign of identifying the real statue, but Maria wants to go to war. The commander says that this mission is more important than war. Maria asks what are they going to do by bringing the idol here. The commissioner explains that this is the order of the commander and chief. The statue will be turned on the Moscow army, so that by the grace of God the war will stop. After this we see that Maria is sent off for the mission, but they are attacked on the way. Before the enemies can reach them, Maria escapes with her remaining companions. By morning they reach close to their destination, but because of the Nazis, they decide not to go straight to the church, but through the garden, to ensure that no one makes any noise after seeing them, they render the civilians on their way unconscious and then dispose of them. After much difficulty, Maria reaches the church where she meets Skeet. At gunpoint, the surgeon returns the idol to Maria. According to the signs given by the commissioner, Maria comes to know that the idol is real. The priest tells that the commandant comes to the church every week and he is accompanied by guards. If he comes out now, he will definitely be caught. In such a situation, Maria tries to escape from there by shielding the priest and his assistant. But on the way, the assistant makes noise due to which there is chaos and firing starts. Every member of the unit is killed except the sergeant and Maria. The commandant asks the priest about Maria and the sergeant. The priest tells that he did not want bloodshed hence he remained silent. After giving clarification the priest leaves from there. Then the commandant orders Maria and the surgeon to be found and eliminated before they can cross the border. While the surgeon and Maria think of ways to escape from the Nazis, just then, while searching for them, the priest reaches them. He tells that this is a memorial cross, which was built in the memory of Father Alexander and Mother Barbara. He was shot for going against the Soviets, and his daughter left him. The priest says that Maria would know this very well because Father Alexander and Mother Barbara were her parents. 
but Maria just wants to escape from there. To this the priest says that he knows a man who can help them cross the border, but in return Maria will have to return the idol. Maria agrees to his condition and follows him with a sergeant. Meanwhile, on the way, the priest meets an elderly woman who tells him that the Nazis are looking for him. In such a situation, the priest forbids him from telling anything to anyone. While crossing the road, Maria comes across a soldier. He asks Maria to show her ID, but Maria does not have an ID. Now before he can shoot Maria, Maria snatches his gun and beats him to death. Then, while trying to escape, all three reach the house of the man whom the sergeant had made unconscious while coming. But that war was so strong that the man dies instead of becoming unconscious. The priest wanted to perform his last rites, but the sergeant tells him to move ahead. When the limits are crossed, the priest throws the sergeant on the ground like a child and refuses to interfere in his work. In the silence of the night, the sergeant searches for a safe way to reach the border. The Nazis get information from an old woman who met the priest during his escape. It doesn't say much, but it tells us that the priest seemed to be in some trouble. The information given by that woman is of no use to the commandant. The Nazis are searching for the priest, so Maria tells him to disguise himself by shaving his beard. The priest calls Maria by name while cleaning the blood from her face. Maria asks how does he know her name? The priest explains that he knew his mother Barra and father Alexander, who were killed by the Soviet Union, but Maria did not believe the priest at all. While searching for a way out, the sergeant comes across a group of Nazis who kill one of their own soldiers for fleeing the battle. After returning, the sergeant makes a plan to distract the Nazis with an explosion. He asks whether Maria will be able to throw the grenade far. Maria says no, because even during training I have failed in this test. The priest tells that he can throw a grenade because he had taken military training four years ago. While searching for them, the Nazis reach their hideout, but before that all three had left from there. After the explosion, all three run towards the border through the forest. The Nazis are also after their lives with ferocious dogs. The sergeant tells Maria to move forward with the priest to distract the Nazis, and himself goes in the opposite direction. The sergeant starts missing his aim. Like Maria, he also had no faith in God, but now he prays to God to help him if he exists, and indeed his prayer is answered, and all the dogs are killed by his bullets. But at the same time, the sergeant also becomes the target of the Nazis' bullets. The Nazis drag the sergeant's body to the commandant, but Maria and the priest are still missing. Therefore, the commandant orders to find both of them dead or alive and bring them back. There we see that the priest was asking for shelter from someone to stay overnight. Maria wonders why the priest is helping her. Maria thinks he is a spy, so she wants to get rid of him, but he makes Maria unconscious and takes her inside the house. When Maria regains consciousness, he apologizes for his actions, but to stop Maria, they had no other option but to render her unconscious. He explains that he is helping Maria because of her parents, whom the Soviets had killed very brutally. Then the owner of the house learns that the priest has been convicted by the Nazis, how he wants to kill Maria and the priest, but then Maria, who does not believe in God, starts praying to God, holding the idol forward, that man cannot commit any crime in front of the idol. Therefore, he asks both of them to leave his house. On the way, Maria explains that she never had faith in God, but today she is not able to understand how she suddenly started singing the Lord's Prayer. Pastor says that people remember God only when they are in trouble. Maria says that her father was against the Soviets, so he was killed, but his mother had not done anything, then why did he kill her? The priest has no answer to Maria's question. At the same time, the Russians catch them and take them to the comrade commander. Maria recognizes the comrade. This was Powell, whose message Maria had given to his wife. But today, Powell refuses to recognize him and orders both of them to be shot. Far away in the woods, the soldier shoots at Maria. Then the Nazis attack the Russians. Maria is saved because the bullet hits the idol. But the Russian soldiers are unable to escape the Nazi attack, even after turning her face away. Maria cries after seeing Paula's dead body, as if she loves him. Then a Russian soldier opens fire on the half-dead, and the priest is killed. Despite not wanting to, Maria has to leave him there. Alone and without support, Maria reaches Moscow, chanting God's name, 
and completes her mission by handing over the idol to the commissioner. Whatever happened to Maria during the mission, she narrates it through tears. Leaving there, Maria meets the old woman. She tells that the idol has reached Moscow. Hearing this, the woman prays to Maria and asks her to go to her child. Maria says that she does not have any children, but the woman repeats the same words again, that her child is waiting for her. Then Maria thinks of Paul. She reaches his house, where he learns that like Paul, his wife is also dead, and now her child is being taken to an orphanage. Maria understood the old woman's signal, so she adopts the child. Arrangements are then made to move the statue to Moscow, to prevent rust, and with this this story ends.